Alright, welcome back to Operation Shattered Pyre. Uh, hopefully my microphone isn't super blown out now. Make sure to write to your local senator and ask them to ban all digital applications that take control of your microphone and automatically boost the volume. Like that fucking ever helped anyone. Excuse my language. But we're back, and it's uh, it's gonna be time for us to touch down on the damn map. Now we brought a pretty suboptimal squad because that's all we had. No offense to these guys, they're great troops, but they're not the high rankers that we really want to be going on a mission that has heavy written on it. Especially when we've still yet to test ourselves against mutons in this campaign, even though they really should have shown up at the start of this month. As is, I've been expecting them on every mission this month, so let's get down to the dam, let's see if we can exploit these snipers, and let's uh, give you guys a look at a map you might not have seen before. Copy that, Big Sky. Strike one is cleared to engage hostile targets. Watch your backs out there, people. So the plan's pretty simple for this one. Uh, essentially, we're going to bring in some combat engineering teams and we're going to construct a literal castle out of the second watchtower. Uh, I'm going to build uh, a base defense ion cannon on top of it. And we're just going to basically shell the rest of the map in a siege-like method that will take uh, approximately two or three months of real time. Um, that's the plan. Let's get into it. But seriously, there is uh, an actual plan for this map. Basically, it revolves around the fact that this map has uh, large areas of no man's land that are quite difficult to cross due to a lack of cover in general and just to how awkwardly the cover is positioned on this map. There's lots of fights you'll get in where the cover does not present you the right line of sight to engage and contribute to your squad. You have to be very careful of that. Some positions that look good are actually major traps that you will not enjoy fighting in. The general plan for us is to put our snipers up in the watchtower, have them uh, basically cover us for the first half of the map. Their line of sight runs out, so once we've advanced over the first bit of No Man's Land, we'll try to get, to get them into the next watchtower to cover the last half of the map. Uh, apart from that, We've got a lot of explosives, and that's good because we're going to be getting caught in fights over these no-man's lands where the only thing we really have to do is blow up cover and then let the snipers do their work. So we'll be using our rocketeers and engineers to blow up the enemy's cover and then attempting to just exploit with our snipers as best we can while our gunner and medic essentially hold the line. Um, and hopefully our scout will be enough to get us across the no-man's land once it's fairly safe with lightning reflexes. There's not a lot more else to say. This is going to be very standard line battle -y stuff. The map is very narrow. There's not a lot of room for flanking. But hopefully, as long as our snipers don't completely drop the ball, we should be able to get out of this in one piece. All right. So first on the agenda, let's get Zim moving up, and Daishi right next to her. We'll clear the left and the right, probably move up my engineer on the left to take advantage of the shitty line of sight, throw grenades, rocketeer on the right, we want him in the open with a good rocket line of sight, Meta probably in the middle, and gunner in the low cover. The sniper's of course on the right side, but our first chance, uh, first thing we need to do is get our snipers into position, so we'll try and prioritize this light, uh, right side first aye, aye, with uh, the troops that are going right. Welcome. Aye, affirmative. Allow the main command. Aye, affirmative. Jenna, Overwatch. Aye, aye. I feel, Commander. You know, worst case, if we do take early contact, we've got the snipers and the rocketeer in place and steady weaponed. So as long as we cover our flanks. With scout movement, we shouldn't get caught with our pants down. Keyword shouldn't, not won't. I'm all over it. Well, so far so good. Let's get those snipers in position. Position confirmed. Now notably one of my snipers is actually two baby, uh is that? That's Vera, it doesn't even have low profile yet, so I'll have to keep him towards the back. Yeah, I'll fake Boston. There's no metal on this map, so we can take as many turns as we want. But of course, I'll try not to take too much time. Time is precious. Uh -huh. 
Alright, pull out your laser pistols. And we'll see if we can get you guys in a position. They don't have eggs. Maybe. Roger that. Yes, we're gonna be in position next turn, that's good. We've got the rockets here. And once the snipers are in position, we'll begin advancing on the left flank. Alright, so Kung Tot's gonna take the first position. And Verid can set up on the right. I just want my guy who doesn't have low profile to be further back. And then again, take as many turns as we want, so let me just shuffle around the Rocketeer. Gotta overwatch everybody next turn. I mean, a uh, steady weapon on my snipers and rocketeers next turn. And now we can move up. Now we've got our rocketeer in place, our snipers in place, everyone's primed and ready to go. We can start advancing on the left. I'm rolling. So what we're planning for here, especially since we haven't made any contact yet, is we're planning for an engagement that happens around this van, maybe a pod here. So we're going to have our snipers ready to cover. Rocketeer is hopefully ready to blow. Yeah, it could be better. I'd like to move him up. Maybe to this low cover car. And then our engineer is going to be hurling abuse from this little low cover point. And it should all converge to make a, a nice killing zone. I'm all over it. Off the big. Run that. What was that? I don't know, what was that? Let's find out. Heading there now. Alright, you still got nothing. Look out. Good to go. This is one of those positions I was talking about that looks good until you actually look at it. Like this position in general looks like I've got good cover, but they just don't end up coming past the pipe and they take the van and you can't even fire from this spot. The truck blocks you from one side if you take the left side. It's just, it's just a, like, this blocks you if you're here to get into the van. Just from experience on this map, it's not as much fun as it looks on, like Commander. to get caught in a fight in these no man's lands. It's a really great map, though. Like, it's a fun map. Okay, well, it's, it's a really awesomely made map. It's just really challenging. Uh, especially against the harder types of aliens. But with two snipers and a lot of cover destruction, I think we should be able to take this fairly convincingly. Or at least I hope so, as long as there's no mutons. I haven't heard any mutons yet, so that is a big bonus. Heading to that location. If I play my cards right, I can even get my engineer up here to van range, and that's excellent. We've now got a rocketeer who can fire across the river, if you will. Let's say this is the bridge and this is the river going under it, so that's really good. Yeah, we're in pretty good position right now. Gotta say. In fact, we're almost in perfect position to move up next turn. I say almost because if I can just get Zim one tile closer so that she can take this heavy cover, I think we're in perfect position. And probably Hunter with her. That would be the perfect engagement. So let's go for the perfect engagement. Just a little closer. Ah! It's always when you want to get just that little square closer. Four thin men. Alright. It's always just that one little tile you want to get closer that they don't let you have. But why would they? Why would they? They don't have eggs. 
Alright, well I can spy one already. Now I can engage here with Zim, but... Honestly, I could probably also just engage with my snipers. And just let Zim move back. Big shots, can top. Not so big, but that's why we bring two of you. So Verid can get the kill. King Tot's the trainer. Verid's the trainee. King Tot's like, alright kid, I'm gonna hit it in the leg. You finish off with a shot to the head, just take it down. King Tot's like, hell yeah, that sounds easy as... Oh, Verid's like, hell yeah, that sounds easy as fuck. Ooh! Alright, so we got a double pot activation. Perhaps most annoyingly, it's a double pot activation with three floaters that have now overwatched on my left. Uh, meaning that... Now I can't move the Engineer up quite as easily. Because, you know, obviously bad things are going to happen. And I'd really like to take that shot on that Thin Man too. Well, I am in heavy cover. It wouldn't be the worst shot I've ever taken. Wouldn't even be close to the worst shot I've ever taken. Um, hmm. This kind of changes how I want to play things. Maybe what I'll do is move the gunner into the heavy cover. Move Hunter into the heavy cover as well to bait. If Thin Men poison because they see two people together, it's good because Hunter's got the med kit. Hunter is immune to the poison and can heal Zim if I need Zim active. That's going to let me move j -Bells up to get a slightly better rocket. Daishi's probably not going to take the shot, but Daishi can chill there. As for... Uh, potato, potatoes just gonna have to move up next time instead of this time. Roger. I've got my eyes on. And there's no point hunkering because these guys aren't hunkered, so I might as well take my free shot. Ah, not quite. But you get that. Ooh. Oh shit! I always forget they can do that. Alright, so we got a great little activation uh, move from the floater there, doing a nice little launch behind me. It's going to be annoying to deal with. He's got me pinned and he knows it. That's clever play from the floater. Luckily the heavy cover saved me. That, all you got? that is indeed all he's got, but he's got friends. And Dinmen are notorious for their sharpshooting. Like that. Kinda like that. No poison today, it seems. Oh god. Don't kill Zim. Zim's my favorite. I know you're not meant to play favorites, but I'm playing favorites. Zim is my favorite. Okay, so we've got a really problematic heavy... F oh, not heavy floater. Floater leader behind me. And then we've additionally got floaters to our front. Both of these are good candidates for some fuckery. Both of these are good candidates for some rocketing. Now, the only saving grace of this floater is that he popped onto my left instead of launching behind my right. This means that people are actually in cover against him. All I need to do is get a flashbang against him and he wouldn't be so tough. Or I just need to pin him with uh, someone moving back to deal with him. Someone like, for example, Potato. Now, if I move Potato back take cover here, uh, I can actually pin the guy maybe with some overwatch while the rest of my squad focuses on the rest of the map. Floaters are generally pretty scared of overwatch. It's all going to come down to this rocket. Let's see what we want to do with this. Uh, I could potentially get a lot of killing power with this one rocket. I mean, as long as that hits anywhere near the two-tile scatter radius that it should, Nothing but good is going to come out of this rocket. So what I probably want to do is take this uh, right away. And base the rest of my turn off what this does. Oh yeah! That's a dead Thin Man and two very wounded floaters. That is a nice first rocket from j -Bals For the first rocket in his, in, his, uh, in his career, as it were. Now what can I do here? I can run back, but then I'm flanked. Is there any world in which I can get a flashbang without getting flanked? If I run back to this truck, I can get a flashbang on Mr. Floater. But obviously these two floaters need to be dead for that to be a safe move. But when you look at all the cover I just blew up, that might not be so difficult. 
That might be accomplishable. Let's see. That's a dead thin man. Those should be fairly dead floaters. Especially with some flushing action. That should be a dead floater. I'm not so sure about that one. But you should be a dead thin man. Snipers hit the remaining two targets. Alright, we could make this work. Alright, we'll start with a flush. On you. Dead, we're down to... Two floaters. You should be by and large dead. That's down to one thin man, I believe. Hostiles pacified. Is that correct? We rocketed one... Yeah, I see three, three bodies. That is correct. That means if my two snipers can just pick off these two, we are going to be having a great day. We'll start with Kung Tot on the uh, big guy. Kung Tot can actually see that target. Scary. But at least Kung Tot's in cover. Kung Tot against the floater. Please hit Kung Tot. Nice job. We're down to one of each now. One on one. Easy finish off on the Thin Man. Now we simply have to deal with the trickiest floater. The floater who was so clever. The floater leader who said, Alright, you guys stay here. I'll go on a courageous Medal of Honor flanking run. And then watched as his entire team. He's soaring over the sky like Superman. He's like, I'm going to take you on the journey. His team's all alive at this point. Oh no! And at about this point, at the halfway, he's just watching his whole team just get picked off by XCOM. Oh no! My friends! Still can't help him. The last two men just died. He just arrived and he's pissed. But I'm not going to give him the movie justice he wants. I'm going to fucking fuck him up. Now it looks like if I just move to this truck, or perhaps even here, I should be able to get an easy flashbang. In fact, if you look at this, I should just be able to get a flashbang straight up, right? No. Grenadier gives me 20% further range, so I'm going to have to move into position to flashbang him properly. So what we'll do is we'll Heading run up. Flashbang him. Now, floaters will just stay pinned by Overwatch at the best of times, so that flashbang may not have been necessary, but this is just to be sure. Heading to that location. We're going to keep him flashbanged and then pin him, and with Overwatch facing down on him and a flashbang, this guy should be insane if he tries to move. It's the safest thing I can think of. And there's your hunker down from a very scared floater. Very scared indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, we can move up without flanking ourselves, which is nice. That's a no-brainer for the start. It's going to deal some nice damage. Of course, it was never going to kill him. Now, is he still counters hunkered down? Yes, he still counters hunkered down. I was kind of hoping that to get rid of the hunker status. I always forget how hunker actually works. So we're going to see if we can hit some shots of our snipers after I apply some holo targeting to this threat. Heading out. Beautiful shooting there from the floater who's literally Negative ducking damage. for his life right now. Oh, my friends! Get him, Verid, get him! Verid, you're letting us down. Get him, Kung Tot. Oh, my friends! There you go. Join your friends in hell. And then we'll dump their bodies unceremoniously over the dam later. So, that first engagement went fairly well, considering we just took out four thin men and three floaters at once in the space of about one or two turns. Um, the pot shot on Zim was unfortunate, but at least she's not dead. You know, what else can you say? Uh, we'll get her healed up from the snipers, and then we'll carry on with our mission. But it does give us undisputed control of this crossing now, as long as there isn't a pod hiding just like here. And that's really important. So that's that's a real win for us. Good to go. And fight again. So 
So I just gotta heal up my gunner. Poor little Zim, I would have been so upset if she died. She's my little trooper. Don't move, you'll be fine. She just loves to kill, you know? And I just really respect that in a gunner. Okay. Okay, she's just so happy all the time. Heading out. On the move. But I think that went about as well as it could have. I'm lucky that that last floater um, was pretty easy to deal with. It could have been much worse. Shh. I think I heard something. So it sounds like we've got sectoids at the back. Yep, hello sectoids. I've got good river crossing cover here with my rocketeer. We'll get everyone back in a position before we make any moves. Aye, aye, Commander. I'm on the move. There's Potato. Come here, Potato. Already there. Ready to engage. And we're reloading. You see this little exile girl here? This little exile guy? I didn't kill him. He was here before I got here. Look at this cool little ump 45 though. I wish that was a model you could use in, in Long War. I mean, sadly it's just baked into the map, but how cool would that be if you could have actual uh, little ump 45 models? It'd be sweet. Alright, let's just steady aim our snipers. I'm on the move. And prepare to cross. So once we get over this no man's land, um, assuming we haven't made contact, uh, our short term goal from there will be to get our snipers into the next watchtower. And then after that, we'll just be trying to take on the last half of the map. I'm rolling. Heading there now. Will do. The real question is, is it just a sectoid pod left? This was a heavy, wasn't it? it? Wasn't this a heavy abduction? There should be more than just sectoids. There should be another pod back there, but they haven't made any noise. So... Either they're standing still, not making noise, or it's that... I mean, sometimes you do have heavy missions where there is not a fourth pod, or a fifth pod, or whatever. Or, or it could be Seekers, I guess, because don't, no, Seekers don't make any noise, we learned that. Seekers don't make any noise, that's right. I'm, I always get confused between Seekers and Outsider Pods. Moving to position. That's not where I wanted you to go. Luckily there's nothing there. Heading to that location. Been done. Welcome. Alright. Roger that. Now I felt pretty good about my perfect engagement I kind of got to have just then. And you hear that? as you get deeper into this map, the line of sight shit fuckery and etc. only gets worse. So I really want to take a good look at this section of the map and see what the perfect engagement would be. Give me a second. I'm actually going to think about this for a second. All right. So taking a good look at it, I think what I want to do here is put... Obviously, I'm going to try and sneak my snipers into this position once I've... Once I've got up to this blue tarp, I can, can kind of consider this line safe. And I should be able to sneak my snipers into position. Uh, we'll have them here, bringing down fire. Probably stick for my initial movements. My rockets here, here kind of in the back middle where they should have angles on everything. Uh, in previous missions, I've had my rockets here on this point. Because it looked good to me to have them on the right side. And it's, it's a couple squares more pushed up. But there's... They just get fucked on line of sight. Like, they can't fire to the left. It's fucking annoying. Uh, excuse my language, uh, line of sight bugs make me angry. So, I'm probably going to like, stick the Rocketeer in the back. Uh, maybe Gunner up here on this truck wall. Engineer here, where they can hurl grenades of impunity. Uh, and then Medic firing down the middle. And they can switch up their roles if they need to. 
Um, I don't even made the medic down here. Maybe you know you can switch around, and then maybe the scout on the left to try and scout out how far I can move up to this blue car. Poke and see if I can reveal these sectoids if we haven't hit them by then. If not, we'll move up on the right. Scout probably move up to this heavy cover car. We'll see how far we can get. Usually the pods are like they're within range if you move up to the edge of this map bit, so you can reveal them without going too far. But we'll see how we go. The most crucial part is right now. I need to get to that blue tarp safely to make this work the way I want it to work. Alright, so there's nothing yet. Aye, aye, Commander. That's affirmative. Take us a couple of turns to get in the position here. In the bagel. Double time. I killed, Commander. And our snipers need to keep covering us for now. Got it covered. We cannot move them up yet. Because if we get caught out in a horrible fight as we're moving up on the tower, it's going to be a bad time. Alright, now let's get people in a position. I'll probably put my engineer here. Medic in the middle. Yes, Commander. Rocketeer should have sight of... God, the line of sight is shitty. Alright, you can't fight on the left from that spot. That sucks balls. But that should be okay because there's nothing to fight here. So as long as it's got the middle, that should be all right. Need to move up my gunner to be in position. One, two tiles. So move one, two tiles forward. Now you can get to where I want you to get to. And we'll move the scout up to, to additionally be able to move up to the car. Again, we're trying to go for the best possible engagement we can get. All right, let's get my gunner in position. Nothing, nothing except a barely clothed exalt guy doing some kind of splits maneuver. Maybe he's looking for his keys. Guys, <laughs> guys, I lost my keys. Help me look. I think they're down here. That should be the video thumbnail, it's just that guy in that pose. Alright, so I, if I can sneak Daishi over here... I just need to get... I'm rolling. ...up to this blue top, and then it's safe to move my snipers up. Overwatch. Aye, aye. Covering now. That's all we gotta do. Scanning. The top of safety and reliability. Considering how much we've revealed, we shouldn't hit contact until we hit this next car anyway, so this is probably all for nothing anyway. It's probably all worthless. Aye, aye, Commander. Yeah, we've got we've got coverage to move up. Well, I can sneak my snipers into position, that's no problem. And that'll get rid of any problems I could have with line of sight. Hmm. You know it isn't that bad. Oh no, they'll get blocked by that shed. Let's move them up. It is that bad. I'm thinking to myself, like, I usually move my snipers up, but it doesn't look that bad today, but no, it, it looks as bad as every other day. I'm just looking at it with a more optimistic viewpoint. So we'll get our snipers in position, and then we can continue. At least we are in fairly good positions. The line of sight can get a bit dicky at this point. I don't, this is, like, my least favorite part of the map. Location confirmed. But hey, this map is really pretty and beautifully made, so it kind of makes up for that. I'll take it. You can have a few line of sight bugs as long as your map feels awesome to play on, and this this dam definitely feels awesome to play on. That's affirmative. I just want to go down in the sewers of it and jump off it. And say I didn't kill my wife, and the thin man will be like, I don't care. Whoa, they sound really close. I hope I get into this tower. I've covered most of my bases with it. I think. There's the chance that they're sitting next to these drums and we act uh, accidentally just spot them through the cover, but... I think we should mostly be okay. Hey, we might be okay. Boy. Boy. 
Oh boy. Alright, let's get... Let's see. Let's put Varid in the more backish cover. Until up front, same as we did last time. Let's do those weapons. Now this is like going to be the last activations of the map. Whatever we activate... It's likely to be a double, because this is all that's left of the map, right here. That This is the end of the map. You know, we go any further, you know, so we're probably going to activate whatever's there at the same time if there's multiple pods. All we've heard is sectoids, but we there wasn't enough aliens in the other pods for this to feel heavy yet. So it's either sectoids only, and I got lucky, or it's sectoids and seekers, because I haven't heard a peep out of anything else down there. So what I might do is chuck out a scan from Zim. I still gotta back up in case I activate Seekers later. But I might be able to start off the engagement by uh, getting some sniper shots on exposed targets. Scanner. Battle Scanner is great comboing for that. It's not just for Seekers. And indeed, there's the Sectoids. So now I can pick them off. And the additional nice thing about this is by by pulling by Sniper, it's not a tactic you often get to use because you need a Battle Scanner to do it. But pulling by Sniper means that you're surgically only pulling that pod, which means if there are Seekers, or there's like this stealth Muton pod that hasn't made a noise the entire game, I'm only going to pull the Sectoids and I can just sit here and let them come to me. So, we'll steady our aim. Oh, fuck it, I mean... There's nothing else coming, I may as well just take my shots now while the scanner's still going. So Verid's going to take a nice rookie trainee shot here. Okay. <laughs> Sector's like, hey, I, I think XCOM's here. Let me go sit in a position where I can totally be flanked easily. And Cookdot thinks that's too easy, so Cookdot's going to take the full health one. Alright. So I could have just easily picked off one, but I'd rather put them both on low health, because then I can flush them easily if they run at me with one health anyway. So it's, a, it's, it's okay for them to be on that kind of health. Um, so from this point, we'll probably just be letting them come to us, overwatching, and uh, making them pay for it when they run towards us, basically. On the move. I'm on it. Moving. Probably move up our offensive line a little Headed bit closer. I just to get that first turn Overwatch they're about to give me. Oh Welcome shit! Where the fuck did you come from? Oh, nice, nice. Such good damage. Such good damage. And against Seekers, too. So there was a Seeker pod. This was the stealth. Three for three? Not three for three. Okay. Miss. Potato not feeling it. So what is this? One, two, three. Please let me see where the Seekers are going. XCOM, please let me see. XCOM, please. Alright, well, as we expected, here come the Sectoids, but we don't have the Overwatch we were expecting to have. The nice thing about activating the Seekers in the scanner is they didn't even try the stealth. So I got my money's worth out of that. Oh, and they clustered. Hi, idiots. Welcome to your nightmare. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, probably want to move my guys back just to make sure they don't get back blasted by the rocket damage. Probably want to get him away from what is about to be the source of a lot of pain. A lot of pain. Solid copy. I'm rolling. Sim should be okay. Maybe. Sim, Sim should be fine. Sim should be good. I'll put it on the back one just to be safe. Oh, now i got to play the Seeker Tentacle Dance. I hate this dance. Please don't make me play the Seeker Tentacle, the tentacle Dance. Oh, uh, come on! I hate playing this fucking game, Seekers. Just just sit there. Oh god, not there it is. Oh god. How the fuck do you... Shh. That'll do. Eat this. Take what I can get. 
Alright, so that's two Seekers dead. Just the big data Seeker left. Uh -huh. You see what I'm talking about with this fucking... the line of sight on this part? I hate this fucking part of the map so much. Neither of these guys can see it. Now, Hunter, I get. The car's in the way, but... But Potato, really? You can't just step out? Fuck you. Fuck you, try harder. Um, but hopefully Zim can kill this off for me. Perfect damage. And so far, it's all going by the numbers. Here today, at the XCOM Arena. Now, who's my last person? Daishi. Uh, no flashbang, so I'm probably just going to engage with the snipers. And, uh, do my besties. I need to kill this one the most, because it can actually see Verid, and Verid has half cover. And Verid is making a name for himself on his first mission as a sniper. I believe this is his first. Well, let's pick off the easy one, I guess. You're nice and friendly looking. No kill. Shot wide. Shot is indeed wide. Do I want to take my 50%? Well, probably. There's no reason not to. I could just hunker and not accidentally get shot. Ah, fuck. It's a little baby. 50. 50. No 50. What are those seeker bodies doing? I, I couldn't tell you. I have no idea what they're doing. And then we'll move Potato back up. And Hunter 2. Now that the rocket threat is over. They can be ready to engage next turn. So it's all down to these last three sectoids, by the look of it. What's your move? At least if you shoot my half-cover scout, it's better than moving up and shooting half-cover Verid. He's got less health. And he could have done that anyway, so let's see what he does. Yeah, he's gonna sh- <laughs> Scorches the roof of my castle keep. But no dice for him. Now I'm ready to move up a bit. I think. I'm gonna blow that guy's little hot sky high for a start. Say goodbye to your face, wanker. Alright, this is why we need Sapper. That hut is not exploded. Uh, but I can still engage him. Maybe, maybe we should get some holo targeting in first. Uh, like right about... Uh, we can probably move up at this point. Let's get some holo targeting on point. Out of ammo here. Oh, damn it! Hell, if I could get a flush in... The flush would deal with this guy better than any sniper would. Easy skins, easy life. Easy money for my girls in. And then my snipers can't shoot the sectoids. Okay, those drums are in the way. That's unfortunate. Probably ready for J-Bells to move up at this point, so I'm going to put him in Zim's old spot. Overwatch. Scanning. Maybe if I move to the right? No, he's, he's just out of sight. So, I'll just steady aim and hope the sectoids blunder into my sniper's scopes. Like, kind of like that. Yeah, kind of like that for next turn. Alright, Hunter, you were never going to make that shot. I don't know why... No way that just happened. I don't know why you tried to shoot through that literal barrier, but... Good attempt. Ow! I should never have moved Verit up. I got off lucky. Well, I can keep flanking here and potentially... Yeah, I, I can get a nice little flank here. Depending on where the other sector it is, and there he is. Damn. That was close. Now, it's only a ballistic pistol flank, but it's still going to be scary for him. There's your three damage, and he's going to have to run now or stay being flanked. So you know he's going to move. You know this guy's about to move. And I might just flashbang him if I can't kill him my snipers. Just to be extra safe. Head into that location. But you know this guy has to move now. Now I add a rockets on J Bows. But Zim can move up. And potentially get a flush. Or hell, even easier. Just get a suppression, the guy's gonna run. You're gonna get an opportunist shot on that guy. Easy peasy. And he's probably gonna be dead anyway from Kumtop. What am I even talking about? 
What world am I living in where I didn't have sniper support? I don't know, I forgot all about him for a second. Affirmative. And then hey, if I'd actually been smart... Oh look, I, st I still can get it. Potato for the win. Potato for getting the literal win. Mission accomplished. And there you go, that was Operation Shattered Pie. Um... I think this is one of those maps where taking two snipers on a roadway actually paid off pretty much exactly as good as you could hope for it to pay off. Um, this is kind of like the dream I have when I think of a roadway map and taking snipers on it. And they're pretty low-ranking snipers, so kudos to uh, Kuntot and Vered. My hat is off to my veteran Lance Corporal Sniper and his uh, little trainee buddy. But that was well done by all, all around, and we got out of it with, uh, we got out of it fairly luckily. Alright, so the dice can go away, and we can head back to base. Oh. Oh, baby. Oh my god. <laughs> Would you look at these nicknames? So, Kung Tot's kind of taken a shine to all the Thin Men uh, that got killed on that mission, I guess. They, they're starting to call Kung Tot Thin Mint. <laughs> he doesn't look like a Thin Mint. But he can get Disabling Shot, Prec Shot, or Snapshot. And uh, I'm pretty sure I've gone through this with Eco already, but I'm going to go for Disabling Shot on him. I could probably use a few uh, Precision Shot Snipers, but we'll get to that once I've got some actual fleshed out teams. Uh, Heat Warheads is too easy a choice for my Rocketeers. And low profile on my Snipers. Verid probably wouldn't be wounded for 14 days if Verid had low profile. Zamboni Daishi just got promoted to Corporal. Uh, battle scanners for Daishi, which is nice after the tragic loss of uh, Fugelman. We didn't have any very good scouts left, so now Daishi is taking up the mantle. <laughs> that is the most... Really? <laughs> that is the most Canadian nickname we could have given Daishi, so... God bless, I guess. <laughs> Why is Zamboni even a nickname? <laughs> that must be one of the Patreon nicknames. But yeah, we can finally get Battle Scan out for our scouts again. Uh, Zim, my girl, is divine, and she is ranked up to Corporal, and that's going to be an easy choice again for heat ammo for my gunner. It's a choice so easy, the game's try not to let me click it. And then Hunter, we're finally getting a medic kind of promoted up. Uh, quite cool, quite interesting with the new medic trees in Beta 14. Revive is a Lance Corporal uh, perk, so you've always got it. Now you can take Covering Fire and go Overwatch Medic if you want, or you can take Steadfast. You know, your options are all open, but I really love having Revive on my medics. It's it's rarely used, but when it is used, it makes a big difference to me. And I really like having the option of retreating from missions where someone's gone down by being able to revive them and then extract of everyone alive. So, Revive often... I, I just feel a lot happier having it. So there we go! That's a nice lot of promotions on that mission. I could not have asked for a better mission. That was excellent. And a hundred... hundred sweet dollars. Remember, we will be watching. Alright, so, what do I need to do? I need to scan for Exalt, uh, safely would be like on the 26th. Beyond that, there is a small infinitesimal chance they will strike soon. But I think I can play my cards to maybe the 28th of May. Space it out a little bit more, because if you scan too early, even though it's possible Exalt's gonna strike, they may do this bullshit where they haven't made a sell yet and you waste the money. So we'll scan on like the 28th. We should have a sell by then, and we can get a $50 scan before the new month. Um, apart from that, what else do I need to do here? Let me uh, look at my journal, my dream journal. Alright, so I can solve my dream journal, I remember what I, what I wanted. Uh, I'm interested in trying out the new marksman scope for scouts, which lets them engage at about 5 tiles beyond normal range with their marksman rifles. There's certain situations where I'd really be interested in trying that out, um, so I'll buy one just to have it. I wish it kind of gave you like 5 aim as well, just to justify taking it, but we'll see. Um, then I also want to take, what was it, uh, mag pistols to get extra crit on our pistols nice and early, because that's always going to pay off in the long run, and aircraft boosters so that I can start getting stuff like extra accuracy and extra pursuit time on my interceptors. That takes up most of my money. Okay, Shen, you, you, uh, I feel bad now. Shen, tell me again. The foundry is already warmed up. I'll let you know when the boys have finished it, or whatever, okay. Yeah, he said his thing, guys, he's happy now. So we're gonna scan on. Excavation complete. Okay, excavation is complete, that was that. 
Perfect. So I've got excavation everywhere now. Great. Super good. And I'm going to get my weapons. Ooh, eight fragments for an engineer. Don't mind if I do. Got my laser strike rifle. Got my sniper rifle. Got my scatter laser. Got my scatter laser. My squad is operating at full accuracy and damage and potential right now. And it's excellent. This is great. Contact detected. Which is good because here comes a medium UFO. If only I had seven more hours to engage it with my laser cannon interceptors. But it looks like it might be landing, nap of the earth. Um, we'll send out a bird just to track it down, in case it doesn't actually land. Well, mm, you know what, let's be honest, we're never going to take down a medium with these interceptors, so we may as well just watch what it does. Contact and there you go. That is a landed uh, medium UFO. Alright, well... UFO landings, uh, let me let me say this right, UFO crashes, especially small UFO crashes, are a great chance to train up new troops. UFO landings are much scarier. You've got to deal with the two outsiders in the mediums, but also, there's generally more aliens on UFO landings, and the maps can sometimes be tricky because of, you know, the forest not offering a lot of places to sneak around. Um, so I want to take a fairly decent squad for this, I think. Well, I want to take a decent squad, and then I look at what I actually have. I don't even have enough, enough troops to... Hmm. Uh, I need to consult my timers and see how long I have before the landed UFO takes off. Um, but hopefully, if I play this right, I can probably skip the abduction time, which is about 15 hours. Uh, and then I've got Renzol. I've got Kamikaze. I won't have Wolfa. Alright. Well... Uh, let me consult my timers. I've got a little notepad of all the timers. I need to see. Hang on. Excuse me for a second. Alright, so I'll put it on screen for you guys because it's actually really important information to know when you're trying to get these extra troops into these missions. But according to my information, I should have 15 hours for a landed UFO mission. So I'm going to be able to get Rental. I'm going to be able to get Kamikaze. And that's going to be it. But that should be enough. We're gonna <laughs> oh man, we're going to have to take three rookies and a whole bunch of untested specialists. But... You take... you take what you can get. There's... Kamikaze Melon, and we're still right on Renzo, I believe. How long have we got? We're so close. Alright. Well, let me gear up the squad. Shouldn't take too long to pick who I'm taking, uh, and we'll get right into this. Alright, so uh, we have very real and noticeable holes in our squad roster here. One of them is that we have no engineer with Sapper, so cover destruction is going to be difficult for us. I brought a couple of HEs on my rookies to try and make up for it, but we're probably only going to be able to blow up like half cover logs and stuff. You're never going to get through a tree with these people, but you know, it's better than nothing. Uh, Kamikaze bring in the Ruckus with the auto laser. I'm going to stick a scope on him because I really need that heavy damage to be hitting to make up for the rest of the squad. Also sticking scopes on my rookies because all they can really do is shoot. So uh, both my rookies bring in scopes with their laser rifles so they can actually hit anything. Uh, we've got Squint and Morgan, Assault and Scout, both new to the job. They're both going to be carrying scatter lasers and ceramic plating and flashbangs and they're both going to be doing a very similar role. Shock troops with flashbanging if they can't flank anything that turn. Um, apart from that, we've got uh, a new medic, Hawkeye. We really need to get new medics trained up. They're going to be bringing a smoke grenade. Uh, she's got a battle scanner, and between her and Kamikaze, we've got the two medkits we need. And then we've got Renzol, who is probably our very literal ace in the hole, the rocket up our sleeve for this mission. This is our serious cover destruction. We brought uh, an SMG to offset the mobility loss, then we're bringing an extra rocket, so that's two rockets and a scope for fairly accurate cover removal. Hopefully, this is going to work out for us. I've also finally brought two scanners. 
Oh shit, I've only brought one scanner. Uh, I need to bring a second one. Um, burn cycle, you can bring the second one. I brought two scanners because we don't want to get fucked by seekers. Seekers are really deadly on these forest maps because there's no corner cover. It's all these trees you hide behind only from one direction. So seekers can really get to you. Um, I think I need to do a little bit of Barbie dream, dream, uh, dream fashion Easter in my squad. So give me a second here and then we'll go. Yeah, there we go. I always love a good bit of customization. It's been so long since I customized my troops properly. Feels good. They've all been wearing this jacket, but Longwell gives you all these great options you can cycle through. Like, you can have no shoulder pads, because I want my Rocketeer to be, like, I want to I wanna strip her down on weight, so I take off all the unnecessary stuff so she can sling that rocket around. See, it makes sense when you think about it. And then, you know, you've got this option, you've got the big bulky option for my Assault, who, you know, needs all that extra armor because she's going in there and screwing things up. you got the little binoculars on my Scout, because she's the Scout! You know, she's she's the scout. She hasn't got time for a helmet. She's too quick. She's got little binoculars. She has bullets for her laser gun. You know, it's it's all good. His burn cycle, he's got eyes that stare into <laughs> your soul. Kind of like Iku. That's why Iku has the sunglasses on, right? Maybe they're like eye brothers. Um, but anyway, I think my squad's ready to go now. Let's, uh, let's do this up. Strike one, prepare for landing. The area of engagement for this mission will be in India. We track the alien craft to a landing site in a rural area outside of a small town. We should move <laughs> to secure the site and clear out any hostiles we can find. Look at his eyes, man! They're just so vibrant and bright! He... <laughs> uh, Operation Morbid Hammer or whatever. Alien landing site. There's a crash jeep. We'll get to it next week. See you then. <laughs>